up, YouTube? Today we're doing a little carnita asada, my wife and me. Um, I'm gonna film everything so you see how I do it. Uh, we're gonna start off with the most important part, a little bohemia. Don't be thirsty while you're, while you're grilling, while you're cooking. Um, and then next, we're gonna get off with the, with the beans right here. I left them soaking for about 12 hours in water. They're gonna be nice and soft, nice and creamy. And I'm um, gonna put those in the Instapot. They'll be ready about an hour, 20 minutes, and we're gonna get started on the guacamole and everything good after that. All right, get ready, guys. What's up, YouTube? It's been a minute since I do a video. This is gonna be the longest video I've ever made. I already published the one in Spanish. Published or posted, <laughs> published. Um, right now I'm just getting started with the beans. Almost gave my dad a heart attack with all that salt. Uh, caught that though, put it back in a little container. And uh, I know I said it's starting off with the guacamole, but we're actually gonna start off with the salsa. Um, just cause we wanna get these uh, tomatoes nice and roasted or toasted or whatever you wanna say, but we're gonna throw it on the, on the griddle or on the comal. Man, what if I start teaching you guys how to speak Spanish? I should probably do that instead of making two videos all the time. I should just translate everything. So we're gonna drop all of these on the comal or griddle and uh, throw your tomatoes or jitomates on there. Get them nice and toasty. Tomatoes, jitomates, pretty close. Just say he, it's a, it's a male tomato, jitomate, <laughs> stupid. I throw a little water on there, to make them a little steamy. Then I got this tomato. We're gonna start up with the guacamole while the tomatoes are roasting over there. And, Guacamole in Spanish is guacamole. So it's a kind of confusing, but I think you guys could get that one. Uh, some people just call it guacamole too in English. I didn't even think of that. So guacamole, guacamole equals guacamole. All right, we got the tomatoes going right here. I always start with one tomato and then, you know, I, I do the onions. Uh, uh, you know, I, I take a gander at them. I see how what the ratio is to tomatoes and uh, I add accordingly. Always take a gander, guys. I guess take a gander in Spanish would be echate un taco de ojo. Take a gander. Pretty much the same translation. <laughs> All right, so this is me chopping up those onions nicely. You know, if I see a big piece, I'm not afraid to pull that bag, that bad boy back out. Chop them up a little smaller. And uh, yeah, and you got some leftover onions to throw on your tacos and stuff. I didn't use the whole onion. Um, and then on this one, my wife doesn't really like spicy too much, so just doing one jalapeno, taking my time cutting it up. I kind of like to cut the pieces big so she can move them to the side because I do enjoy a nice uh, nice chunk of guacamole. I mean, a nice chunk of jalapeno in my uh, guacamole. Um, just to give it a little heat, you know? You, you bite into that, it's crispy. Uh, give you a little kick on your tongue. It's nice, It'll wake you up. All right, but one one jalapeno, one big jalapeno was enough for this. Uh, we only did four avocados on this. They call it green gold, el oro verde, green gold, oro verde. And uh, yeah, avocado in Spanish is aguacate. Man, I had that idea halfway through, I mean, at the beginning of the video and I guess I'm going through with it. All right, aguacate is avocado, guys. Oh man, I feel like Dora the Explorer. All right, that's my Chivas uh, bottle opener. It's the best team. If you don't like uh, Mexican League soccer, you do now. If you uh, watch this channel and your team is Chivas. All right, I made a mistake right here. Dropped that little lime in the wrong pile. Threw them in the guacamole. Don't worry, I'll catch it. I'll catch it. Um, got the cilantro. Always disinfect your cilantro. Throw it in some water and some white vinegar uh, for like 10, 15 minutes. You don't know what's been on there, what bugs have been living on the cilantro outside, pull that guy out. Like, what were you doing in there, little guy? And uh, yeah, grab a little fork and go to town. I guess we're muddling it. I don't know what this is called in English. We're just mushing it up, muddling it. But the fork works great. And uh, yeah, a little guacamole. Can't, you can't have a carne asada without a guacamole. I mean, you can, but it's better with. Throw a little salt in there. Don't forget the salty salt, the salt. And yeah. Here we go, now it's halftime, baby. All right, what's up guys? We just finished doing the guacamole. Gonna have a quick little taste test with this bad boy right here. Make sure we get a jalapeno in the pit for you guys. Nice little jalapeno. All right, you can't even see it. There you can kind of see it.
Mm. Salsa will be ready soon. Oh yeah, it's getting close. See the bad boy? Getting close. The beans are done. I just put them on vent. So the steam just left it. Left the pressure cooker. And we're gonna get that fire started. Get the charcoal going. And then the good stuff will go on the grill. All right, stay tuned. All right, guys, as you can see, that tomato's looking nice and good. I'm gonna flip them around. Um, I always leave them like on the skin side first, so that part gets nice and toasty and nice, like that same color. That's the color you're looking for when you're making a salsa. And uh, yeah, the little garlic cloves are ready. You wanna be able to push them through the skin. I throw them on with the skin. Always throw them on uh, your griddle with the skin, your comal with the skin. And, uh, and then push, like pop them out of the skin when you're gonna put them in the blender. And uh, garlic in Spanish is ajo. So there we go, ajo. All right, these are the famous tree chilies. I wanted to show you guys the bag so you know what to buy if you don't speak a lick of Spanish. That's what the bag looks like. And uh, yeah, these are my favorite chilies. I throw these in everything if you've watched more than one of my videos. So I can't live without these. It probably goes these, water, beans, and uh, beer are my necessities to live. All right, so I threw about five or six tree chilies on here. Five or six, I'm not too good at counting, but you wanna toast those bad boys up. Um, I think you can hear me coughing in the background. I left some of the sound effects on. I think it makes it a little more, makes the video a little more juicy. Like, oh man, you hear that popping on the grill? So yeah, I, I just uh, let them toast up from one side. You see it's black on one side, it'll be red on the other. Like that, oh man, I couldn't time that better. And um, you, I mean, I do toast them more than that, but I, I honestly need more windows in my house because you know, It'll make you cough if you've ever cooked chilies before. But this is good enough. If you got them on one side, they'll taste good. The other one's called a burnt salsa, salsa quemada, and it makes it look darker, but it'll still it'll still be spicy. It'll still have a good flavor if you only burn them on one side or toast them on one side. And uh, yeah, I'm showing you, I got all the tree chilies in there, all seven of them, uh, just so you don't think I threw them on the griddle just to, just to make it look like I like spicy food. Nah. We put them all in there, it tastes good, it tastes spicy. And make sure you never, don't add water to your sauces unless you need to. Uh, you want those things to be chunky. You want you want to taste, not water, you don't want it to be watered down. You want it to be chunky. And uh, that's why I don't, I don't really like boiling them too much. I like throwing them on the grill, they taste better. Uh, if you have a mortar, most traditional uh, sauces are made with mortars, I don't have one. So I'm, I just make them no water, make them as thick as possible and blend as least as possible to, to do like a fake, uh, a fake martajado. Cause I don't have a mortar, but you see how thick that is? That's what you, that's what you want in a, in a, in a salsa. Hopefully someone who, who doesn't, who doesn't know Mexican cooking that well is watching this. They might like a Mexican guy or a Mexican girl and they want to impress them. This is how you're going to do it. I promise you watch my video, follow these steps. You impress, you know, Pablo or or Jessica, you'll impress them, I promise you. They gonna like what I'm cooking, they're gonna be like, where'd you learn this? Actually, they might get a little jealous, like, oh, you were lying, you used to date a Mexican, they, they taught you this, and then you're gonna have to show them my videos, you're gonna have to have them subscribe, just so they calm down a little bit, because the Spanish, you know, we get a little jealous. Our blood runs hot. All right, so here we're gonna throw, uh, we're making uh, the frijoles fritos. I was, before in a previous picture when I was ranching for no apparent reason, um, I was showing you the beans were ready. But throw a little oil in there, throw three uh, tree chilies, break the fourth one up, sprinkle the seeds in there, and there we go. You're gonna add your beans. These ones are already hot because they just came out the pressure cooker. I need them ready quick. Um, but usually they're, these beans I had sitting in the, I mean, usually when I make refried beans, they've been sitting in the fridge from the day before. So it takes a little longer to heat them up, but all these beans are already hot. So instead of taking 20 minutes, it took about six to eight minutes to do this. But yeah, throwing these bad boys in there, like so. And we're about to start mashing them up. I'm gonna grab, I don't know what, I think these were made, I think this utensil was made for potatoes. I don't know, I only use it for beans. But you could, you could I mean, any grocery store has it. I'm pretty sure it was made for potatoes. That would make a lot more sense. But it works, it works for this. This is what you're gonna use it for. You need one of these if you want the best beans in, in the world and these are there man always use peruvian beans don't use pinto beans i don't know who said mexicans use pinto beans no 
Peruvian beans, frijol peruano. Those are the ones we use, they're the best beans. I think they have a different name too, but that's what they call them in Guadalajara. Um, Guadalajara in English is Guadalajara. Um, yeah. And then our refried beans are frijolitos fritos. Frijolitos fritos. Now look, when it starts bubbling like that, they're good to go. You can add a little salt. I added salt when I made the beans. I thought they were good. I tried them. But you can add a little more salt. Always salt to taste. Now look at these sides. Look how beautiful it is. Look at that chunky salsa. Look at my refried beans. And look at that mountain of guacamole or that mountain of green gold. All right. We got that rachera. Uh, here you call it ranchera. The ranchera steak. In Spanish, it's arrachera. And I'm using my right hand for the meat, my left hand for uh, the beer and the salt, so I don't think I'm cross-contaminating anything. All right. Flip that bad boy over, hit it with a little salt. Look at that. Oh man, this is the best meat for a carne asada. Spend a little extra on this. Sometimes, the last video I did, I did uh, Diez Mio. Um, I think that's Chuck steak. Just, just spend an extra three bucks for the pound on this. You're gonna, you're gonna enjoy it a lot more. It's a lot softer. It's what you're supposed to do a carne asada with in Mexico. It's, you know, pretty much the best, the best meat for carne asada. It's soft. It doesn't take a long time to cook. Um, it's not a, it's not a cut that needs to be thick. So it's good. Just, just how they serve, how, just how they serve. It'll be between like six bucks a pound to like eight bucks a pound. But here I got my little chimney. Getting the fire started. Um, fill that bad boy with charcoal. And I think it, it rained a little bit last night um, or drizzled because the floor was kind of like um, humid. Not humid, uh, just a little wet, damp. Damp is the word I'm looking for. And um, so it took a little bit longer than usual to spark up, but it still only took about two minutes to get going instead of, you know, fighting with uh, building the charcoal in a little chimney and stuff. I paid 20 bucks for this Weber chimney and it saves about 30 minutes off of every carne asada for me. But yeah, I guess I'm a city boy, I sold out, but I don't have time to build a chimney and be fighting with the wind. If it's windy or not windy, this thing will start up. But yep, there we go, look at that. You see the smoke popping? It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. All right, now I just got my new uh, coal mover or shovel. I don't know what it is, but I like it. And I'm just uh, putting them all on one side. Look at that. Mm. Go. All right, here I'm throwing down my uh, onions, my cambry onions. Oh, it's hot, careful. And now we're gonna grab the chiles hueros. I guess in English they're called yellow chilies. So chiles hueros, yellow chilies. And then cebollas, onion, onion, cebolla. Man, you guys are gonna be fluent Spanish speakers ready to go to Mexico next week if you watch this video twice. And then we're gonna throw down the chorizo or the longaniza. Chorizo, pretty, pretty much the same thing in Spanish and English. Chorizo, chorizo. You just put a little more emphasis on the I in English. Get those nice and dark. Put some uh, tortillas with some queso fundido. Cheese, I don't know what that happened. What does fundido mean in English? Like melting cheese or cheese to melt? I don't know. Throw some refried beans in that. And then throw some chile in there. I didn't put too much because my wife doesn't like super spicy food. I was just taking the first bite just for the YouTube, just for the gram, just to have a nice little shot. But she finished that. I'm saving my, I'm saving my, uh, my stomach space for the meat. Look at that, look how beautiful that is. I grabbed from the bottom because that's been so soaking in the beer more. So I always like pull from the bottom and then the top pieces will lower in and the beer will rise, you know, so. I pull from the bottom, they've been soaking longer. Look at that, oh, that's beautiful. That's what you want. I'm telling you, that's what you want. A ranchera, ranchera meat. Look at this. There we go. Once you see a little juice on uh, one side coming up, it's ready to flip. I forgot to film that part. And uh, yeah, you're pretty much done. Look at that. Half decent, baby. All right, guys, we're all done with the carne asada. I'm gonna serve myself a plate. Look how bomb that looks. Mm -mm -mm. So 
I was posing for a thumbnail, a potential thumbnail. But yeah, lo carnita asada, super fire. See what these chilies do. Mm, chorizo. A little bit of the rachera. Decent. 